Today I'm going to share with you one of the most requested videos I have gotten is my newborn or baby registry essentials. So my approach when registering for our first child was really to only register for what I'd need in the first like about four months. And the reason for that was like I just didn't want to have a ton of stuff around me that I had to wait like six months to use. And I'm really glad that I did it this way because I think I would have bought things or bought or registered for things that I don't know if I would have actually ended up using it now that Harriet is like seven coming up on eight months. So I found this a really easy way to make a kind of simple minimal registry uh, when you limit the like time span that you're registering for. So registering for like the first four months um, worked out really well for me. In this video I'm going to tell you all of my newborn essentials and also planning on filming a video about my breastfeeding tips and postpartum essentials because I found that really hard to find like what you needed postpartum as a you know first time mom having my first baby I wasn't really sure what I needed so I'm going to do a video uh, about that and once it's uh, live I'll leave it in the cards or in the description box link below. All of this stuff is going to be linked in the description box below. I'm going to try and link them all in, out separately, but I also have like an Amazon um, kind of like shop page where I have collected all of my baby essentials that I have on Amazon, which is probably about like 90% of this stuff you can get on Amazon um, all in one spot. So you can click the like Amazon shop my baby essentials in the description box below. I also have a blog post to go with this video that shows like different photos and kind of a little bit more information about each of the products. Um, so take a look at that. I'll leave that also linked in the description below. But now on to my newborn essentials. So I'm going to start you off with probably my number one favorite thing. Well, okay, this is hard because I have a lot of favorite things, but there's probably like two things that are like my top, top newborn needs and the first one is called the snuggle me organic it's like a baby lounger or a co-sleeper um we used it as a co-sleeper harriet slept in our bed and well still does <laughs> now um in this thing for like the first four months or so and this thing is so wonderful it's probably hard to see on the video but it's like a i don't know it's like a baby dog bed is what I kind of call it sometimes but what it does is your baby kind of sits in this little area where it's like a almost has like a sling like effect in it and when they sit down or like lay down and I mean not sit when they lay down the kind of side bumpers kind of squeeze in and hug them and so it leaves them really cozy and you know that they're not gonna roll around and they can't really move or anything like that once you put them in there they're kind of like very stable in there as opposed to other ones where it's like a flat surface and then there's kind of like a bumper all the way around. Um, I absolutely love the Snuggle Me. It's probably going to be my number one gift giving thing or suggestion to um, new moms is the Snuggle Me Organic. I can't live without this thing <laughs> or I couldn't for the first four months. And baby sleep is like the most important thing. So on to my second most important thing or they're just kind of the top two things that were just crucial for me having a baby right away um, was some sort of baby wearing setup. When Harriet was first born, um, I pretty much lived in the Solly wrap, which is one really big long piece of fabric and you kind of do this origami thing over your body, which feels a little complicated when you first try and then it becomes second nature. Um, I would, when I was on maternity leave, literally for like the first, at least first month, I would literally get up put this on, I'd have like a tank top underneath and I'd put this on and I would just wear this all day because I could just easily pop her in. It's so soft and lightweight that it um, really just kind of feels like an extension of your clothing. And she slept so well in this. She would get usually at least one nap, maybe two during the day in the Solly wrap. I absolutely couldn't imagine my first couple of months of having a baby without this thing. Once you get a little bit older, I mean, you can use that Solly Wrap for a really long time. The only thing about the Solly Wrap is it's like a 
<clears throat> a bit more work to put on, especially when you're like out in public or out running errands after, you know, you've taken your time to rest after having a baby. Uh, I really love a ring sling. I was really intimidated by the ring sling. Um, at first, I just didn't really know how to do it. I guess with all baby wearing things, I was a little intimidated. Um, but the ring sling is incredibly easy. It is super quick and fast to put on. And I just absolutely love this thing. It lives in my diaper bag all the time. My favorite brand of ring slings are the Sakura Bloom. I've tried um, another brand that's really mainstream on uh, like Instagram that makes ring slings. And I just, I mean, I only tried one of theirs. Um, I just didn't like their fabric as much. It was really not as soft as these are. And like, you just want them to be like soft and cozy, especially because here it was in the summertime. And I always felt like the other ring sling kind of like scratched the back of her legs. And this one is crazy soft. This is a linen one. Oh, they're like butter. <laughs> Next up is some sort of car seat cover. This one is from Copper Pearl, I think. I got this as a gift from a friend. I hadn't registered for one because I was like, I don't think I really need a car seat cover. And oh my god, this thing is such a necessity. Especially for those first couple of months when you go out with your baby. I mean, take time, rest as long as possible. But when you do go out, it is so weird how people like, they see the baby and there's like absolutely no bubble around the baby. People like stick their hands in your car seat and it's just super weird. I found that really kind of bizarre when I first had a kid of how like people just have no filter and or like just no spatial awareness. And throwing this thing over the car seat is the best thing ever because then people just can't touch her <laughs> and couldn't like weirdly stick in and like grab her foot or like grab her little hand. I'm like, I don't know you. You have germs. Like, don't touch my newborn baby. <laughs> so this thing is awesome. Plus, uh, what I really like about this uh, Copper Pearl one is it's a really thin, light material. It's stretchy. And so it stays on around the car seat really well. It doesn't like fly up from the wind at all. Plus being that it's so thin, it folds up really small. And so you can keep it in your diaper bag for, especially for those first couple of months. It's so nice. Plus it darkens out the um, uh, car seat if they're like sleeping or fell asleep in there when you're out. Absolutely cannot recommend a car seat cover enough. <laughs> So I tried to go pretty like minimal with what I registered for, for um, baby clothes because people get love to buy baby clothes. So I just didn't really register for much. Um, I kind of bought the essentials of what I thought I would need. And there were two types of styles of uh, like onesies or, you know, kind of that um, bodysuit type of thing that I found really, really helpful to have. Like I said, Harriet was born in the spring and then like kind of early summer. So most of this stuff is more like warm weather clothes. Uh, so you'd probably want a long sleeve footy version if you're having a winter baby. But something that I really, really liked were these onesies from Target, this like kind of kimono style with a V-neck. And the reason for that is, is it's like so big and wide and it's really, really easy to put these over a baby's head. The regular ones, like just the traditional onesies, oh my God, I felt, felt like she was like, have him giving birth again, <laughs> pulling it over her head. It was like so tight and I don't know, you just, they're so little and you just want to be so delicate and it always felt like the other ones would just squish over their head. So these ones were really awesome from um, Target. I ended up buying them in like every, like the first three sizes that she would be in because I loved these so much. And then these I bought on Amazon. They're from a brand called Moon and Back, which I really like that brand. Um, and they are, I can't believe she was this small. <laughs> these were really, really helpful in the beginning too when she was born, like I said, in the spring. Plus these have like arms to it and then it has the little fold over part to go over their little fingers so they don't scratch their face. Um, when I, sometimes when she was in like these short sleeve ones, I'd put like little gloves on her so she wouldn't scratch herself. But again, what I loved about this is you didn't even have to put it like over her head. Go like this and this and just kind of snap her in. It's more snaps, but it was just easier to put her into it, I thought. And more gentle way of putting her in and out of her clothes. Plus, if she had a blowout, you could unbutton it versus having to take it off. Also, I learned like a life hack with regular um, like onesies is instead of pulling it up over their head if they have a blowout, you pull it from their shoulders down. Blew my mind. <laughs> 
So the two like sleep sacks, sleep swaddle, swaddle things that I used, um, I tried a regular blanket that was not going to work for me. Here it got out all the time. I was not good at it. It just didn't work. <laughs> um, so what instead we ended up using were a combination of these two uh, sleep sack swaddle type of thing. In the very, very beginning, Harriet had a, just didn't like to have her arms down. Like she liked to be like this all the time. It was just like this. I posted something I remember on Instagram and a girl that I know from college actually wrote me and said, you have to get the love to dream swaddle because it's like, it's like a little baby starfish, but it uh, holds their little arms in like this up top. And oh my God, this thing saved my life. <laughs> so incredible for the first couple of, like at least the probably the first like solid month, maybe two months here, it was in a love to dream swaddle. And that helped her sleep really well and worked really well for our little one. And then um, later I put her in when she was more comfortable having her arms down and that felt better for her and she slept better is I had the Halo sleep sack. Uh, I really liked these. I like just the cotton ones versus the like other muslin ones. I don't know. They have a couple different fabric options, but for her in the summer, the like traditional cotton ones worked really well. And this is Velcro. So you could Velcro them in and she couldn't get out <laughs> for the most part. And then it also like covered her little legs so that she was nice and cozy and warm. So while baby blankets aren't super necessary, I did use them all the time. I really like um, having some muslin blankets on hand. My personal favorite in brands is the ones from Little Unicorn. I thought, I just feel like theirs are really, really soft. They have adorable prints on them. Um, so I highly recommend the Little Unicorn ones if you're looking for muslin. I tried a good handful from um, Target ones to Amazon ones, like kind of major brand ones. and love the little unicorn. I also, this is probably one of my favorite um, baby blankets. I kind of didn't think you'd really need like these type of things, um, but Harriet ended up being born a bit earlier than we had anticipated and it was oddly a lot colder out than we had anticipated too. So I bought this kind of like <laughs> pretty much right after she was born. I was like, I need like a heavier blanket than this thing. Um, this is another blanket from Little Unicorn, and it's a much heavier blanket, but it's still really like light and breathable. Um, it's made of kind of like a muslin material, and I just absolutely love this. We still use this all the time. So I'd say getting one of these and, you know, maybe like four of these is about all you really need. I have a ton of these, and I could probably donate some because we literally probably I mean, at most, at, I need four, I think, maybe three of these muslin blankets. Something that I also registered for that I really liked having that may not seem like it's a super necessity because you could just use the blanket or whatnot, but in the very beginning when they kind of like throw up a little bit here and there, having like a specific burp cloth is really nice because you know that it's like, you can keep it clean. It's not like the blanket dropped on the floor and you wipe their face with it or something like that. I really like the ones from Burt's Bees um, and the reason for that is because again they're like really thin and you can um, roll them up and easily stick them in your diaper bag and they're pretty small and get pretty compact and I really like these. These prove to be very universal. I pretty much kept one at, you know like on my nightstand every night um, for when you know little pukey things happen <laughs> with a baby. <laughs> Another super must have with a new baby is the Nose Frida. This thing may seem really gross and really weird, but it is so nice. Absolutely a necessity. It's like a snot sucker. You like suck the snot out of their nose. Um, there's a little filter in there like this that you can replace um, when you after you use it so you don't actually like eat any of the boogers or anything gross like that. But we did have like one of those ball things and those things absolutely sucked, absolutely sucked. So this, super, super essential. Um, I also have like a saline spray uh, that really helps it when it's dry up there and she's kind of congested. You gotta have the nose Frida. For like bottles and feeding, Harriet really didn't take a bottle for the first like three months or so. Um, she still doesn't really love the bottle, but the bottles that we use are the Avent ones, they're glass. 
Um, also, didn't know this before having a baby, there are different nipple flows and you want to get ones that are really, really slow for when you first have a baby. Didn't know all of these things, but um, a slow flow nipple is really important. I like this one um, because it kind of has like a same look and feeling of a breast. It, it is more like rounded and domed on the top versus like really narrow and pointy so that it hopefully made a better transition to the bottle from the breast, but she still likes it from the source. <laughs> and then for a bottle warmer, we have like the Kindy uh, bottle warmer. The reason I really liked that one is because it warms up the bottle or it, it warms up the milk with water. It takes longer for it to warm up, which is a bit of a pain, but it helps to maintain all of the amazing things that are in your breast milk when you warm up a bottle with, you know, just like warm water versus like zapping it um, with some of those like instant bottle warmers. Another thing I, I find really essential if you are using bottles and like pump stuff is to get one of those like grass drying racks and like the little tree. Um, there are white ones out there, so it like looks aesthetically nice in our kitchen, but those are really nice so that you're not setting your stuff on a um, towel that maybe just isn't as like cleanly for it to dry as having like the grass um, drying rack. So I really like having that. We use it often. I pump um, for when I'm at work and then I also try and pump extra to donate milk each day. Another essential for me throughout the seasons has been some sort of baby hat. Harry pretty much lived in this uh, bonnet. This is Brer? Briar, Briar, I think, bonnets. And I absolutely love this. It has like a little brim and it kept her head like protected from the sun. She also has like sun hats and all the hats. Really keeping a baby's head out of the sun or in the summer is really important or in the winter some sort of hat to keep them warm. Baby hats are just like an essential, whatever season you're in. Another thing I found an essential is like a pacifier clip and a pacifier. Not everybody into pacifiers, but I remember Harry, well, Harry didn't use one for like about three or four weeks um, because I really wanted to make sure breastfeeding was established really well. Um, I was sitting in this chair and I was like, Joel, you need to go get me a pacifier or Harry to pacifier like right now because she would just like, suck and chill out there and I was like oh my god my nipples are going to fall off <laughs> so we went and got the Soothe pacifier that worked really well for us for the first couple of months or so um, and then he upgraded to a different pacifier from Havia I believe it's called and it's made of like uh, kind of like a natural rubber so it's biodegradable I like that it's all still like one piece like the Soothe versus some pacifiers that have like the little plastic uh, or like the little silicone nipple part, but then it's like a plastic guard thing over their face. And I found, cause she had a few of those um, in between the two pacifiers that she uses, um, that, and it would like collect just yucky stuff in that seam and that just totally grossed me out. So I wanted to find one that was like a one piece pacifier. Uh, and I really liked those plus um, the natural rubber are like biodegradable versus just the regular plastic ones. And then for the pacifier clip, I like this one from Lulu Lollipop. It has like silicone beads and wood beads, so it's great for like teething and she would play with it and just kind of like chew on it. Weirdly, she also likes to chew on the like metal part. I don't know. I don't know about her. This thing's plugged in right now in her room. This is our sound machine. It's like dome dome sound machine maybe and I really like this one it's uh, has like a bunch of different levels you can kind of move these around to get different tones in the sound and it's like actually a wind sound machine versus like an audio track playing and so it's a more natural sound to me at least um, I really like this it's not like hard for me to sleep without it uh, so I definitely recommend a sound machine to just kind of help drown out a little bit of the background noise when they're sleeping. Another kind of like sleep time essential for me, especially in the first couple of months, was a little night light. This one you could plug in and it would be like wireless and move around with you and you'd like tap it. It's kind of dead now because we don't use it anymore. Um, but this thing was really, really nice to have in the beginning months. Ooh, it does still work. I just need to turn it on. And you can like hold on 
to it and it'll dim way down. You can make it bright again. This is really nice to have for like those late night diaper changes and different things. It can change from like a light or like the amber color or the one before that was like more of a white. I don't know why I can't change it now. So this thing was really, really nice to have in those first couple of months in those late nights and different things like that without having to flip on a light and you can carry your night light around with you. Plus I could just reach over and tap it. If you're wondering what like my diaper setup is, we actually use cloth diapers. I have a whole video about how we cloth diaper. So I'll leave that linked um, and that'll have like the changing pad and like the bin that we use and the cloth diapers. These are bomb genius if you're interested in that type of stuff. And then for bath time, we put Harriet actually in the sink and I just got one of those little like flower sink inserts and that worked really well. Now she just like hangs out in the bathtub itself and I just kind of guard her. <laughs> and uh, we have kind of a small bathtub so it's really easy to just fill up a little bit of water in the bottom for her to like bathe in and play around in. All right, we're coming to the home stretch. <laughs> Now in making this video, it doesn't feel very simple or minimal, but I feel like I have a fairly pared down set of baby stuff, but you could go way more minimal than this. I am absolutely certain, but this is kind of like my simple approach and what has worked really well for us. So on to like baby gear. Uh, we really liked the rock and play for the first couple of months. Harriet napped in that a lot and was a lifesaver for me <laughs> in the beginning. So I picked the auto rocking one. You can get one that's like a manual rock, but I had the auto um, rocking rock and play. Uh, we also had the Baby Bjorn bouncer thing and that thing was a huge lifesaver. I would put that in the bathroom with me um, when I would take a shower or when I was like kind of getting ready and just pop her in that and she could just watch me. Absolutely, she loved, loved that thing. Another goal for me when buying like baby gear is we're planning on having more children. So I wanted stuff that would be like compact and could fold up and could be packed away for the next baby. The um, Rock and Play does that as well as the Baby Bjorn thing. It folds up and becomes super compact and then it's just stored downstairs and then you can take off the little um, uh, fabric part that they kind of like hammock part that they uh, sit in and wash it and that's like stored in a bin. So they're really, really compact, like storable items and they don't take up a big footprint, um, especially when you're having your first kid and if you're planning on saving some of this stuff for our future children. Another essential for me has been like our lovery uh, play mat. I really, really like this thing. I wish I would have gotten it sooner because she really enjoyed it. It has kind of all of these different um, stations around the mat that are kind of help evoke different types of play and learning. So there's like sensory ones that, you know, like touch, sound, um, that kind of thing. As you move around the play mat, there's like colors and there's like crinkles and there's little squishy things. And then there's also like a little canopy part over it where there's like hanging toys and stuff like that. So I really like the Lovery Play Gym. And so did Harriet. <laughs> so that's good. I know I said I registered for like zero to four months or so, but I just throw this in there is I recently got a gather um, like midi mat and oh my god that thing is so incredibly useful. I wish I would have gotten that a long time ago. Um, and it is so versatile, like especially when I would go out in the backyard and hang out with Harriet. It would have been so nice to have that mat versus like a blanket or something like that because it is really easy to keep clean and it is like huge and it's easy to, for her to like crawl around on and stuff like that. We recently brought it on a trip and it was awesome on the beach, awesome near the hotel, awesome in the hotel, all the things. So I am a big fan of the gather mat. We got the double-sided one, it's vegan and it's keep, really easy to keep clean because it doesn't have like a weird funny texture on the underside. They're both like that kind of faux leather thing on the surface. Whew, okay. And then lastly, we have a stroller and a car seat. A uh, car seat is essential, of course. We got the Mesa car seat from Up A Baby because we also have the Up A Baby Vista uh, stroller. Absolutely love that thing. Like, love, love the stroller. Joel loves the stroller. The stroller is just great. Um, 
the bassinet portion, Harry wasn't super into like the bassinet version of the car seat or of the stroller right away. When they're baby, they have to like lay flat, which I totally get. And she was in that for probably the first two months that way. But she just hated it, like hated it laying flat. <laughs> so I went online, did some research. Turns out there is actually a baby insert for the like rumble seat. That thing was so worth the money. I would put her in that and you couldn't recline them so pretty far back. And it helps to like stabilize their head. It's much more cushy and comfortable for them in there when they're young. Like I think you can use that from like two to four months. Um, and that was a huge lifesaver for us um, because she was she would just cry and cry on walks in that flat bassinet thing. <laughs> So the newborn insert for the upper baby was uh, really helpful for us. And then another thing that I got that we used a ton in the summer, like I said, Harriet um, was born late spring and you know her first couple of months were in the dead of summer. And here in Minnesota, it can be really hot and humid. I went on Amazon and I found this clip-on battery powered fan. And we use the heck out of that in her stroller because like I said, it would get really hot and that helped to kind of like circulate some air for her and kept her from like getting really warm in her, whether it was like the uh, car seat when we popped that into the base or the actual um, seat itself. All right, so that is it. That's kind of a lot of things for being a simple, minimal approach to a baby registry, but I really tried to kind of give you a good idea of the things that we actually used for the first couple of months of her life. I'm also planning on doing another video about like baby food and like kind of her eating essentials now that she's into eating food and solids and stuff like that. So I'll have that video, like how I make my baby food and that type of stuff coming out soon. Um, when it's up, I will link it down below and in the cards. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know you guys have requested this so, so much. So I hope you found it useful and I wish you the best of luck if you're a new mom or um, mom-to-be. It's kind of crazy the first couple of months. It's like literally sheer survival the first month. The second month you're like, okay, I'm kind of coming out of the fog. Like maybe I can rejoin society. And then like the third month, I felt like it got a lot better. And the fourth month you're like, yeah, I'm doing this. I'm good. So just hang in there. It's going to be great if you are still pregnant and wondering what to buy. Um, just, you know, you don't have to go crazy. Just get what you think are going to be your essentials. Literally, Amazon can deliver anything pretty much in two days. And yeah, I don't know. <laughs> just my little like token of wisdom, I guess. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. Um, would love to know your feedback and what some of your essentials are that I didn't cover um, because this is just like what works for us in our lifestyle. So that can kind of shift for different people. I think I watched like probably 400 of these videos when I was pregnant looking for like the essentials. So yeah, I hope that um, you found this video helpful and maybe found some things that you think will work for you and your baby. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one.